Welcome back to the charismatic voice. Today is the day that Lorna Shore releases their new album called Pain Remains. And with that, they're going to be releasing the third song of their trilogy, also titled Pain Remains. And I have been saving myself for this moment. I'm going to listen to all three songs in a row right now in this video and give you a first time impression and analysis. Big shout out of thanks to Will, the band, and to Century Media for getting us early access to the third video and sending some isolated vocal tracks. I'll be checking those out in some spectral analysis as we go. Let's get to it. Oh, sorry, I literally just cut you off for your first note. Oh, ah, the timing. Um, but we're gonna go back and actually watch this intro all over again. I was thinking to myself, is this just way too quiet? But then I heard this slow build and I thought, are they gonna make a huge drop on me that, that it's gonna need to like remove the headphones because it's blasting my ears away with tons of blast beats, which is what I kind of expect from Lauren Shore at this point. Uh, and yes, it does start off very quietly, but the build is very nice. I like there's sort of a drawn out tension and a lingering, which seems like uh, in memories. Uh, I'm, I'm digging this um, presentation visually as well. It definitely seems like we have somebody who's looking into their past. Uh, there's already a story that's being told there in the visuals which I think is going to match up very well with the words, which I have read ahead of time. Um, I have to commend Lorna Shore, particularly on their ability to create uh, scores that sound very cinematic. It feels like this could be part of a larger film overall. And already in the music, we have storytelling without even having to have words just yet. Just uh, just really, really good. I want to go back to a few key moments and talk about part of why I think this intro is super effective. Hmm. I had wondered the first time I heard this if this is uh, if that was my heartbeat or a heartbeat in the, the video, if I just had a sudden loud heartbeat or something that I tuned into. And indeed, there is what sounds like a heartbeat right in there. Right there. The sl Slowly rising sense is beautiful. And I feel like there's a little bit of a cross here in the volumes with the synths becoming a little bit louder and then we get a melody just as the word Lord of Shore appears. And the rain, the sound of the rain started to go down a little bit. So I definitely got some cross in the volume to help with sort of a gentle fade. But I like the way that Lorna Shore 
has immediately associated the name with a melody, which I think is fascinating. A lot of times I wouldn't think of death core as necessarily having tons of melody involved, but Lorna Shore has sort of been breaking that idea in my mind. Hmm. I should mention, I don't think that you could, maybe a person could, but I think it'd be very difficult to mix Will's harsh vocals with the sound of the rain. Uh, both of those uh, have highlights in very sibilant areas, and the sounds, I think, would essentially collide a little bit too much, so you wouldn't have clarity between both. So it's a really good idea to have rain at the beginning to kind of take up that area of um, of just the sound frequencies in that whole spectrum. And then hopefully this is gone then by the time that we hear Will enter. I really, really like First of all, I, I like the font on this. Uh, that's just a totally opinionated thing. I like this cleanliness. I like the way it fades in and becomes bright. But it's so cool the way that they show that Roman numeral one afterwards. And I'm, I'm curious if that happens in all of the videos or just this one. I don't know. By the way, how cool is it that they made a trilogy? I'm really curious if you have any favorite trilogies. If you do, sound off in the comments down below. I'd love to know what your favorite trilogy is. Let's go back to the Shining of the One. Stranger Things vibes. I love how distant that guitar seems at first. Okay, so one of the reasons this feels to me like storytelling in the music of this was a past thing is that a lot of the sounds have felt like they were distant, right? They sound like they're originating from points that are farther away. Um, you can do this in post-production, you can do this in your recording process, but that guitar at first, right? It sounded like it was further away and then it started getting closer. So it sounds like maybe um, we're just within the music, we're about to be brought to a present moment. Okay, there's that guitar a little closer already. And everything is starting to feel closer now. Oh, epic! I, I got goosebumps um, right from Will's entrance. Uh, wow, I feel like this already um, for me is packing the most um, sort of sentimental emotions that I've heard anything that Lorna Shore has done. That might also be partly from the visualization, right? I, you get this impression that this woman is gone now. And I definitely got that from the lyrics as well. I want to go back there. There's also a really cool um, ostinato that's essentially happening in the in the music.
So that melody in the background is repeating over and over. And when you have a pattern like that, that keeps repeating, um, that almost becomes just like an accompaniment, if you will, that's called an ostinato. It shows up in lots of different areas of music, but I like the way that they're really taking a repetitive melody and making that an ostinato in here. I'm very, very curious. Uh, I think that Will's voice perfectly matches the lyrics. And uh, that's because I hear so much pain in it, right? He's using tons of distortion and distortion is often associated uh, with discomfort or painful grunting even from animals. And that works perfectly for the lyrics here, which are, uh, you were my everything, right? This, wow. Oh. Um, I'm gonna go back one more time and talk about a couple of things in his vocal line that are really cool. <laughs> One of the things I love about Will is the way he flips between sort of lows and highs and different techniques so easily. Um, at some point, what I want to pull up in the isolated vocal for you all is going to be taking a look at what a low appears as in a spectrogram and what a high appears as because these aren't true pitches. Again, they're pitch centers and I'll show you what that looks like in some spectral analysis. So I'm popping back after I've seen all three videos for the first time and showing some of these moments in RX in a spectral analysis format so that you can see it a little more in depth. This is the highs and lows I was just talking about. I can't walk away. All right, so what you're looking at here is two channels where this is in stereo, left is on top, right is on the bottom, and then the high here is brighter. By the way, frequency low is the bottom part of a channel, high is uh, the upper part. And when it's brighter, it's louder. So this area in here is brighter, and then it gets brighter down in here for the lows. And you can even see some of the scooping up that Will does into these, which are, it's really moments where the two vocal folds are a little bit more active. And then that last part there, that's all tail in the reverb. Let's keep going. It's just, it's like so sentimental for deathcore. <laughs> like it, it pulls in my heartstrings. <laughs> a lot of times I love the way that Will scares me or will make me jump, but instead I'm getting like these very long lines and pulls. It's fascinating. I want to go back just a little more. <laughs> Right there, that scream, the way like it goes down too, it just sounds like something's being torn away from him.
this is amazing. <laughs> I love the poetry of this one. I love the way that we have a combination of this melody and Will's vocals. It's, it's like they've layered in a tune that you can hum along to, and they've even uh, combined the rhythm of his vocals with that tune. And then just the poetry, the lyrics are beautiful. We're dancing like flames flickering in the night, right? We got that while this couple was dancing. We sway in time with the wind before melting away. You're far from my reach, but not far out of sight. <laughs> you know the way to my heart, but you just play the strings again. And I mean, perfectly said because my heartstrings are feeling tucked on like crazy. I feel like reading this, this reminds me of romantic poets. This feels like Wordsworth or Byron, right? This is uh, this is a romance, but it's death core. I, I'm, I'm I feel like they're inventing a new genre. <laughs> it's it's kind of amazing, romantic death core. What this is? It's beautiful. Okay, one more time back at this. This is so cool. Listen to the timing of his words and the timing of the melody with that, so you can hear what I mean about like humming along, even though we have harsh vocals along. <laughs> I totally get why people have been referring to this as a ballad right now. And this, this for me truly does match what I think of as a ballad. Often, a, um, I think of a ballad as in, in contemporary music in particular being something that is often slower, more drawn out, shows a lot of ability to sustain a vocal line. And he, in that, do I call it a chorus? The part where he's talking about the dancing uh, and the swaying, et cetera, et cetera. That there, it had this really sustained legato line. Um, man, the breath control and management that must be necessary to do that, especially when he's triggering different sound sources is really impressive to me. Um, but also ballad, that term, it, in contemporary music, it's often referring to something that's slower and more drawn out, but it comes from just narrating a story. And I think that that works really well in this case, too. We're getting a narration of a story. Ballads can be whimsical, but often we have a connotation of it being more of a, a love song or something that's more drawn out in contemporary music these days. That has shifted a little bit through time. Um, so when people have said, oh, it's a ballad, essentially... I totally get that. I hear that too. I think this is essentially a deathcore ballad. Uh, let's keep listening. I might have some more thoughts on that as we go. That's a great example of two different tonal centers back to back. And then there's that lower one that comes in there. Really cool. One more time. Let's listen to that one more time. Hi. Well, I want to take a look at that. We're going to take a look at that, and then I'll keep going. Oh my gosh, that's another great example of having this high area and then the low that comes right underneath it. They are using, 
<laughs> they're using the overall tonal centers in Will's voice really well, almost like a drop right here. We're gonna look at that one as well with an Isotope RX. This is such a great example of those pitch centers, highs and lows I was talking about. You can check out what this sounds like here. <laughs> So that first part where it's high, there's a center around here, especially in this long held out note, you can see if I go like this, this area is way brighter. There's not as much going on underneath. There is a little bit of something here, which I hear is like a secondary sound source. And then we get a lot more going on in the bottom when it's the lows, when they're kind of used as a drop. <laughs> And honestly, there's still quite a bit going on in the top as well in that low section. Okay, let's keep going. I'm just trying to hold back these tears right now. Holy crap. <laughs> wow, this imagery. Oh my gosh. <sighs> to think about the situation of living or losing a loved one like this is <sighs> that combined with the pain of Will's voice or just the torment and the sound of the music overall. But then I think that melody that's continuing and uh, is pulling on the heartstrings. Wow, what a flood of emotion. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> I feel wrecked. <laughs> Oh man, I I am so impressed right now. Like, yes, they're incredible musicians. They're so technically proficient, each and every one of them. Um, yes, Will's throat is amazing to look inside of. It's so cool to see the different sound sources as they're going off inside of his throat. It's so cool to see the torsion as he makes different sounds. I really think he's a vocal unicorn. If you don't know about that and you haven't seen inside of his throat, you have to go look at Operation Throat Camera. That was incredible. But in this moment, let's talk about the fact that I am crying at a death core song. <laughs> I've never experienced this before. This is the first time that I have felt like just that pull inside me of I can't hold back tears and I'm really good at holding back tears when I need to, when I'm like needing to be analytical with music. I just absolutely cannot hold them back right now. Holy crap. This is amazing. They have struck that perfect note where everything has come together to deliver emotional impact. Wow. Wow. I'm going to go back a little bit. <sighs> I, this is so well written. That instrumental break came at the perfect time when I needed some release, essentially. Um, and they let that come in with this flow of melody. Um, it just feels sweeping, soaring, uh, really, truly epic. Ugh. 
Man, this is this is so beautifully written. Ugh. Oh man. <laughs> I love that shot of Will there. I love the harmony in it. gutted i'm just so gutted wow wow that's gorgeous we're gonna we're gonna go back we're gonna take a look at what these vocals look like when he's whispering versus sung but i might have to take a moment first and just gather uh gather some tears well we're gonna go back and put the analysis showing the spectrogram of the whisper and with more sound beside each other. So that'll be put in, in post. This moment is a beautiful contrast in dynamics. The whispering, of course, is much quieter and then he's yelling, which has a lot more volume. And you can see that here in RX. Show me what it's like to finally know the face behind the silhouette. I love that not only does it show that this section is not so bright, so it's quieter, and this section is gonna be louder, right, because it's brighter, but also we can see specifically what areas, so like what overtones in the voice are brighter, which is really fun to do with Will's voice because of the way he makes those pitch centers particularly stronger or less strong by enhancing various things within his vocal tract shaping. Like, that's what I'm talking about. Wordsworth right there. A world without you wasn't meant for me. Oh my gosh. What a beautifully written line. Okay, let's go. Ahead. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I think this is where it would cut to part two. Uh, I'm gonna take just a moment. We're gonna gather our thoughts and then we're gonna continue with part two. Part one wrecked me. I had to pause and just dab my eyes, get rid of some of the makeup smears because it, it totaled me. I had tears running everywhere. I couldn't even think anymore. All I could do was feel. And wow, uh, I had to had to regroup. I thought I was gonna be able to run through these videos back to back and just go bam, bam, bam. And I had to pause for a moment to digest it. That uh, that was that was unexpected, and I have no idea how they're going to continue from here. I, how do you beat that? I don't know. Let's check out part two.
Ah, uh, okay. Immediate goosebumps. It's just like immediate again. Wow. Wow. How are they striking this note so incredibly well? Uh, I love the, it looks like ashes falling. Um, I'm guessing this was an after effect. Um, in the video it looks really, really, really cool. And the absolute torment in and the the storyline of this is so apparent. One more time, back to the beginning. I can see why this was an it was a good spot to switch between the two. The first one felt like um, a lot more drawn out in a lot of ways, and this one feels like it's just spiraling downwards right now. Love the part two going. Thanks for keeping that continuous. So interesting with some of these highs and lows, I'm picturing how Will's throat looked with that camera down it and how on the highs in particular, a lot of times the throat was so um, squeezed up, essentially um, it had this uh, engagement. I wouldn't call it tension. Tension often has a negative connotation. It is muscle tension though, engagement that causes things to squeeze up into this little tiny hole. It was hard to even catch that on camera because it was so far up in the vocal track that the camera was really close to it. Uh, I was super impressed that Will was able to have that camera there and not just be choking on it with those highs. So when he uh, sings these higher parts, I'm just imagining that little tiny, tiny uh, opening that is in his vocal tract at that point. It's, uh, it's sort of an amazing creation of sound. He really almost sounds like he's a, an, a feral animal that's backed into a corner at this point. Um, and then these growls are emerging. And that is so in line with some of the more interesting research that's been going on on harsh vocals, um, saying that maybe these developed from a need to sort of stabilize the spine um, in preparation for some sort of aggression. Uh, I think it's an amazing evolution of vocal expression. And I think that Will's movements also contribute to making this incredible sound. It's like, it's bringing in that emotion. And when a person has experienced such loss like this, it does feel like you're backed into a corner and you just need to scream it out or do something more. Um, the lyrics of this one are really good and really moving too. <laughs> impressed with the enunciation, the quick enunciation that he's able to get by through this. He's able to flip between these different sound sources and at the same time keep uh, very active articulators going. <laughs> Oh. 
the drops from one ashore are so belly rumbling. And they're just one of the most incredible visceral things to experience in music. Uh, I also, uh, I want to go back a little bit and uh, this image of her being wheeled out. And then with that, hearing some of the anger uh, in Will's voice and in the music, it makes me feel like this trilogy of ballads is essentially about different stages of grief. I just, I think, just believe at some point, um, this one definitely feels like it's the stage of anger. <laughs> Whoa, that's deep. <laughs> Denial, maybe? Oh. I feel like I relate to this on just such an emotional level um, because it's talking about disappearing and essentially being uh, feeling sunk after this relationship has ended. And I hope the words after all that I've done, after all of my pain, after all that I've become, will I disappear? I wonder if he was making a play on those words also. Will I disappear question mark not sure um and then so i'll disappear this to me feels uh, very suicidal at this moment and having been in that deep dark place before uh and being a very very strong advocate for mental health and uh and encouraging people you can get out of that dark place um it's not a bad thing to reach out for help. Please reach out for help. I know that there is a suicide hotline you can call. There are tons of awesome resources for counseling that you can get. But in that dark place, like the, for me, I felt so much pain in my stomach, like physical pain there. And when I hear that drop that happened a little while ago, and then this sort of raging that happens afterwards, honestly felt like the music was expressing the physical physicality of the emotion I was experiencing at the time. I feel a little bit mind blown by how well they're able to capture the torment, the darkness essentially of depression and the rage that can come out of it as well. It's just shocking. Let's go back to this drop. Little right there. That's the part that to me feels like. Ugh. And then here's the rage. Yeah. It feels cathartic to me to see this. I'm really curious if any of you have had this same experience watching this. Uh, shout out in the live chat premiere. Um, let me know in there. Let me know in the comments below this YouTube video, as well as telling me what your favorite trilogy is. So now you've got two different things that I'd like to know about is, do you ex 
experience catharsis while watching it, because I certainly am. It's incredible. I want to take a look at another vocal moment here in Isotope RX. I really want to look at how it's sliding down. You can actually hear his pitch center move down. Here it is in the video once more. Right there, it slides down. Let's see that in RX. Taking a quick look now at that slide down in a spectrogram. Check this out. So this is where the slide down is happening. And you can visibly see that, right? This is gradually going lower as we go along. Cool. And one more time in context. Ooh. Ooh, that was such a cool sound. Oh, I don't know how that one looks. I wonder if that is one that Will makes with his mouth closed because it sounds like maybe it's coming more through his nose there. Really cool. <coughs> I had to sneeze. I think this is because... I've been crying and my nose is running and things are just triggered. <laughs> so thanks, thanks Lorna Shore for making me sneeze in addition to crying. <laughs> This is so beautiful how they're combining, again, these broad soaring melodies in the instruments with Will's harsh vocals. Uh, I, I feel this pounding really within the instruments. I mean, the actors have done a great job in this. You feel that emotion from them for sure. And then you feel it really heavily within the music. But I think it's so important to have a soaring melody because humans like melodies. We latch a lot of motion into melodies. And then you have the tormented words that Will is singing as well. Oh, just gorgeous. <laughs> So right there, it sounds like we have really two distinct sound areas, one that's high and one that's low. And we'll take a look at that briefly in RX one more time, just so you actually can visualize what that looks like. This is one of the most interesting moments for me, at least to see within a spectrogram, because you can really identify the different pitch centers. In this part up here, we have a higher pitch center. And then this part down here, we have a lower pitch center. So that makes me think that Will probably was layering here, but he might have actually had two sound sources going at the same time because he's got a really, really cool larynx. This is what it sounds like. And that's also another really good example of a slide down. But again, if you look at this, this is a fairly large region that's a pitch center, not an actual pitch. If you had a pitch here, it would be much thinner. It would be like that big. And then if you had harmony underneath it, you'd see another really thin line. And instead we've got this bigger area and even a bunch of disturbance of the air between that's really 
the air being disturbed and distorted by all of the noise that's being created in the vocal tract. And one more time in context. That drop. Again, we have this combination of a melody with his lyrics, and the two have a lot of syncing that they're doing. This feeling of a similar rhythm. It's like the melody is what you would be humming along to, but we've gone past humming, so we are just at harsh vocalizations to express more anger and torment. But there is a melody that also goes with these lines. Like, you could go back through and on this, I think that I call this the chorus of the song. On this part, you could literally just sing these words to a melody instead of have harsh vocalizations with them. I'm, I'm pretty intrigued by how this is developing and, um, the way that it, it makes it feel so melodic to me, which I just would not have expected from Deathcore. Oh. <laughs> uh. Back one more time, listen to that. Right there, with the ghost in the breeze. Here's a melody of how you should sing it. interesting that had a lot of the same effect of the guitar being distant before that the first one had where the guitar kind of became closer as we were starting off the entire video I feel like we're hearkening back to that for sure And the synth and guitar combo as well. I feel so worried at this point. I like, oh my gosh, it's like, this is a big trigger. <laughs> Whoa. Um, ah, please, please, please. If you have any sort of dark thoughts, um, there is a hotline that you can call, get help immediately. Please take care of yourself. Be good to yourself. Watch after your mental health. And we're going to continue to watch this. I'm going to go back a little bit to capture it. But um, just know that if you are experiencing something similar, there is help. You can find a way out of it. Life can be amazing. I've been there. I know. Just... Do everything you can to crawl out of that hole and get help. I'll go back a little bit.
really tough to watch. Combine that with the music and everything, I almost felt like my blood was running cold. Oh my gosh. Um, we're going to go back a little bit more because um, I want to talk about a couple of things in here. One of the reasons that it feels so um, blood curdling is not just because of the imagery, but it's also the way that we're getting so many different layers in the music. I, I definitely think we've uh, they've brought the music to an incredible climactic moment to go with this imagery. Whoa. Holy crap. Right, Will's voice is very high. We have that melody going so strongly, a lower part of his voice. Even some choir. Like at that point here, we have drops happening too. There's so many different elements that they're layering to create this musical climax. Wow. We are going to immediately continue into part three because I need to know that he survives. Let's get to it. I love the way this is orchestrated. It's like featuring a string quartet here. Uh, some of the ways the strings are being played remind me of some Eastern music. Um, but then you have these percussion instruments that also have a pitch bin in them. Really, really interesting. But thank you, Lorna Shore, for the continuity of this. The way the painter means um, came on screen, grew brighter, and then we got that three as well. And all together, I just feel so much storytelling in this sort of instrumental break. I want to go back to the beginning and listen to that one more time. That slide, that's the part that feels really Eastern. The strings are beautiful here. Saw some eye movement. Oh. I'm gonna go back to the beginning though one more time because this orchestration is masterfully done. The build is fantastic and it's really about layering different textures as you're moving through an orchestra and there's certain instruments that can add more intensity to the sound. A few things to listen for, listen for, listen to. We start off with fewer strings being featured, we gain some. Um, at one point I heard a filter open on a synth in there as well that can help um, increase some of the sound space that's taken up. Then we had uh, double octaves that start happening in the melody. You had entry of brass in there at one point. Brass is another way to build it after that. 
brass has some really big swellings uh, that they or big swells that they can add to it. Uh, and then right where I stopped it here, we were getting, um, it sounded like a drum library that I've used in the past, a long time ago. It's probably a newer version of that library. It's like called Storm Drums or something, but this more rhythmic intensity and especially uh, that kind of library you see a lot of times added into trailers. So listen for all of these elements of building and orchestration. It's extremely, extremely well done. Again, very cinematic. <laughs> the attack and the bend on that is so interesting. There's that opening filter, cymbal slipping it in. There's the double uh, double octaves. There's a choir that also came in in the background. There's your brass. Wow. This is such an epic build, for which you can clearly feel like is going to be an epic ending to this trilogy. Wow, the storytelling in the music is just brilliant. And for me, it's so much fun because I'm used to it building to epic choir moment. Um, that felt like something could have been in Lord of the Rings <laughs> for me. Maybe it's Lorna of the Rings, who knows? Um, but then the way it tumbles into your more typical deathcore elements, I like that that is showing how deathcore is essentially the next ascension of emotional tension. Oh, that rhymed. So happy that he's alive, bandaging up. And it's a huge, huge relief. Um, again, you can make it past things. You can do it. Uh, additionally, something about the flames that I'm seeing, um, I feel like it's a it's related somehow to this like flame of wanting to continue living, of wanting to continue burning, if you will, um, with incredible passion of life. Uh, I'm probably taking this beyond what they actually intended it, but I don't know. Uh, these guys have some very, very deep meanings behind all of their songs, and I think they're very intentional about symbolism. So it is possible, I think, that the flame is the idea that this person is going to continue living life. <sighs>
such a great example of a slide. One more, one more time right there. We're gonna take a look at that section in RX because it shows highs and then lows and then a slide right afterwards. It's like one of the perfect ways to see all of those things visualized right beside each other. This is that same moment that you can see in a spectrogram. By the way, this is Isotopes RX software. I believe version 10 just came out and you can find that at Sweetwater. Sweetwater sells great musical gear, all kinds of musical gear and software. So I believe that there's a link to Sweetwater in the about section of this video if you wanna do some analysis of people's vocals on your own. This is what it sounds like. So you can see really clearly that there's a low here, quick switch and lots of articulation between words here and the whole center is brighter in this area so you know it's a high. And then this one has a higher center as well, but you see really clearly this Y glide that happens right there. And one more time in context. love the way Will uses his hands. Uh, it, it applies to harsh vocalists the same way that it applies to clean vocalists. Use your hands to add to even more expression. Uh, those of you who know that I absolutely love Dimash Kudai Berrigan have also heard me talk many times about the way he paints with his hands. Now look at how Will is painting with his hands, right? Their hand movement is very, very different, but is the same premise behind. Let's go back one more time here. The contrast between the actors, let's see if I can catch a, a clip of it here. Oh, this, again, this song to me feels like, or I should say the whole trio feels like it's moving us through stages of grief. Uh, the way that he feels blank in the face, like he just can't be convinced to feel anymore, yet we're getting this imagery from the band of fire and seething underneath. I think it's such a fantastic image, snapshot, if you will, of the human psyche, because when things become so overwhelming and you're feeling something so extreme and much, sometimes the face just can shut down, right? You can look like you're emotionless on the outside. And that's partly because you just can't process the emotions anymore. There's so much that is seething inside. Wow. I love the way that they have such insight into humans. <laughs>
You also, um, like you're getting ideas of throwing self into the fire too from lyrics and, and you can tell from his face, it looks like he's contemplating like how, you know, how this might all end. Um, I just feel so impressed by the storytelling here from Lorna Shore. Just once again, amazing, amazing job to the band. It's incredible. I feel really blown away. And we're like only a third of the way through the song right now. I'm going to talk about Will's stance later. We'll keep going for now. What a great jump there. Oh my gosh, the slide up is so effective. Whoa, one more time. Oh wow, okay, we have to take a look at that in RX. Just a quick visualization of what that looks like in RX. This is a slide going up. <coughs> I love having the isolated vocal of that. It honestly sounds a little bit like vomiting. And then it stays really bright through here. That's a reverb tail on the top end. And you can see the lower vocal as layered in here. Whoa. Whoa. And one more time in context. Best instrumental solo yet from this uh, power ballad, no, deathcore ballad trilogy. I think that's what we're going to call it. We might call it romantic deathcore ballad or deathcore love song. I think maybe deathcore love song is the best way to describe this. It's amazing. It's such a new sound to me. Um, one of the things I found really fascinating in this uh, instrumental section is the way that uh, there was a sweeping motion of guitars going up at one point, and within the drums, it also swept through. We had, of course, tons of blast beats happening at this point, but then there were a bunch of beats that were in the much higher uh, frequency clusters, like cymbals. They tend to lay a lot higher than, of course, your kick drum does, and that combined with the guitars as they swept higher. So we had a sweep higher also in percussion. Really cool. One more time, see if I can find it. Right there. It felt like the, the there's like a crushing and a sweeping through the percussion that happened right in there. Ooh, cool. Oh, and then, that was really cool too. And the way we had essentially like different toms he went through to create that same sweeping motion. Just tons of sweeping throughout all of these different instruments. Okay, let's keep going. Again, phew, tears, that, oh, 
the horrible moment of going home to a house all alone after a life together. Oh my gosh. Opening the dark doors. Wow, they've captured this so incredibly well. I love the way they had a quieter Will's voice uh, sort of entering into this section. I think that brought us to the quieter moment of returning home at night. That worked really well. It's such a, a brilliant way of sort of scoring this entire scene. I want to go back to it. Oh, is it here? Big, bigger, bigger. Oh, and the deep, deep kick here is amazing. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. I hope that this doesn't end up in a whole house in fire. Oh man, this is like so <laughs> distressful to watch, but I also am rooting for this person so much to make it through. Um, <sighs> I feel that they have captured extremely well that burning inside that can be happening at this point. Um, and burn in me, I hear over and over as well. Just the complete distress in Will's voice and the distortion that we hear in these really big beats underneath. Are, it's incredible. Man, the emotional pull of this is so intense. But a It's uncomfortable. Great breath control, Will. I didn't think it could get any more intense and then it did. Those drops, the way it feels like it's just like the whole room is shuddering. It's, oh my gosh, mind blowing. <laughs> I am shocked. I didn't think they could take it to a higher level. Like I've already cried my eyes out. Um, I, ah, oh, <laughs> I don't have words to express the emotion that is packed in here. Oh my gosh. <sighs> the anticipation, the dread here. Okay, so it's the way that they've shifted tempos here is one of the big ways that it's making it so impactful. There's just tons of distortion that's happening everywhere. It almost feels like suddenly our sense of time and gravity is totally thrown off. And um, can you imagine being this person and, and gassing, putting pouring gasoline all over a house, all over a memory, trying to burn it down, essentially? Like the way the state of mind that person would have to be in, the disorientation that would have to be there as well. I hear it in the music so clearly. Oh, wow. Oh, 
put it right down. What's crazy to me is after that section, we get a faster tempo that comes back in right here. And that's almost a relief. Like you really feel that things are breaking down in the previous section. It feels like they're unraveling. And then we get a tempo that is sped up again. And you feel like, oh, thank goodness, we're going to continue. Wow. I, I'm so mesmerized, blown away, um, all of, all of the crazy adjectives I could come up with by how this is sending me on emotional roller coasters. <laughs> okay, one more time where that tempo change happened. Again, the same pattern is happening where you have a melody that's in the background and then his lyrics on top of it. It's like you can hum along with him. I love this combination that Lorna Shore is on. It's really just, it shows the beauty and the terror uh, of this entire trilogy. <sighs> cool. Ah! That is beautiful production on Will's voice. We're going to take a look at that in RX because the tail, the reverb, the long reverb on his voice as it fades away is just mm, 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 scrumptious, beautifully done. Let's check it out in RX. We've saved the best for last. This is my favorite moment of Will's isolated vocal in a spectrogram. The reverb tail on this is enormous and it's worth just listening to it as a soloed vocal. <laughs> Look at how long this reverb tail is. Such smart production. And one more time in context. Wow.
tattoos. Just pfft, one more time. Okay, makeup is just gonna fail for the rest of this video. I'm so sorry. Oh my gosh. The pain remains so true. Wow. I think they've done such an effective job of becoming lighter and sort of allowing those emotions to reaccumulate within the musical build there. And then it's like a scene from Up, right? Uh, where you see them go through all of these wonderful moments together and then see that it's ended. And uh, I still am hoping that he survives. You can survive, but it doesn't... I mean, this looks pretty grim right now. But wow, of course, because in the words we heard, this is my epilogue, right? So you get the sense that this probably didn't turn out so well for him. Ugh. I think it was so smart for it. the note right as the fire drops that Will hits. It is um, definitely fry, definitely very, very high. For me, that feels like the most desperate of his kinds of screams, even though the lower ones feel terrifying. They feel more grounded, whereas when you have just a fry scream, it feels like um, it could disappear. Oh, one more time, back to that moment. Oh, there it is. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> Do you hear the way that they've taken his breath, his inhale there, and put it into the drop of sound to make it even more effective? <laughs> it's such smart production. And the way she mouths I love you here is so sweet. Ugh. Wow, what an image. Wow, that was a gorgeous image. The sound of burning there is so effective. Whoa. <sighs> that play out was beautiful. It, it was hopeful and then it looked like they were united, but once again, I want to reiterate, 
if you're experiencing this kind of pain, you can make it through. There is help. Life can be wonderful and joyful again. So please, please, please reach out for help if you need it. Lorna Shore has done a brilliant job. I'm so impressed. It's so chock full of emotion and humanness. And I think that they have captured something truly unique and special here. This is beyond mastery of technique. This is beyond virtuosic playing or singing. This is just human emotion in its raw, brilliant form reconstructed in music. It's incredible, really, truly incredible. Hats off to everybody, uh, their entire team, the team for creating this video to go with it too. So very effective altogether. This is sure to win lots of attention very well deserved, and I wish the band and Will all of the best. Thank you for creating such incredible content. If you haven't seen this third part just yet, they just, just released it. So you can check it out at this link over here, and may you fall more in love with music every day.